All right, guys. So while we were all pretty hyped about the Summer Castoria, it turns out the standout prize unit is actually Chloe. And no, I'm not joking. This unit has kind of revitalized new ways that we could do stuff like Buster Farming because of a little something she's able to do on her second skill. Although really on that note, all of her skills are pretty solid as we'll get into into this video, but I just think it's very funny that Chloe was probably the servant that most people were the least excited for, and now she is like the standout broken unit that everybody's wanting to try to get, and the good thing is that 4 stars did get that little bit of a buffed rate over on JP, so it's actually a bit easier to try and pull for her. And so we're going to go ahead and talk about her today, I'm going to tell you guys everything that she's able to do, show some examples on screen. But before we begin, if you have not already, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for that daily FGO content, and if you want to see me stream FGO, I do that every weekday starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But with that being said, let's start diving into this starting off with her hits, which I don't know how many people are actually going to use Chloe as an offensive servant. She's not particularly bad as an offensive servant, it's not like you can't do that, but I think most people are going to use her as like a secondary plug suit option. However, as a single target quick Avenger, she is going to be able to put in some decent work if you do choose to use her as an offensive servant. Think of her kind of like the quick version of Summer Eris that we got last year. As an Avenger, her natural damage is just going to be very, very high. And on top of that, she's rocking a triple quick deck with five hits a pop on each of those quick cards with 0.71% NP gain and a 6% star gen rate. Now the 6% star gen rate shouldn't be all that bad because quick cards actually did get a little buff during last anniversary where now quick chains will actually drop 20 stars instead of 10. Her own NP also has a pretty good staggering 9 hits on it as well, so in quick chains you should be fine since they were buffed, but I know a lot of people don't really care about using her as an offensive servant, so let's kind of just start moving into her skills. Starting off with skill 1, you can see there's already a lot going on here. So first and foremost, she's going to give the entire party a 20% attack and a 20% crit damage buff that are both going to be up for a total of three turns. Not bad, especially since you know this servant is pretty much just going to dump a lot of her buffs and then she's going to dip to the back line. Now, this next one right here is pretty interesting because she gives the entire party this on attack buff for five attacks that last for five turns that gives them this manuscript completion buff which is actually quite nice. You'll see what this does when we get to the third skill, but just keep this in the back of your mind. For Chloe herself, if you want to use her as an offensive servant, it's going to give her extra damage on her own NP. She also grants herself her own on attack buff for three turns that every time she uses one of her quick cards, which she has four of, right, including her NP, she's going to give herself a 10% crit damage buff for three turns, and that does proc first, so you get that damage immediately. Overall, not bad for her own niche being this kind of like extra plug suit buff dumper person, but also very nice if you want to use her as her own offensive servant. And I do like that they did that for Chloe. She's able to fulfill this very nice role of being able to dump a lot of buffs onto people and then, you know, swap herself out for another servant. But you can also use her as her own offensive servant if you choose to do so. Moving over to the second skill, this is where we have the whole plug suit thing going on. She's able to grant somebody a guts that lasts for three turns. That's kind of nice. A little, maybe a little bit more niche for like, say, challenge quests and stuff like that. If you want to give them some extra survivability, if you're trying to do a three turn and you want to give yourself that little bit of extra insulation. But then basically she's going to move herself to the back line, kind of like Miss Crane. If you've ever used her, it's basically the same thing. And she'll do this at the end of the turn. Not a whole lot to say there, it's just the whole Miss Crane thing that she does on her NP, but it's more accessible because you can use this on a skill, and I think that's why she's seeing a lot more use than, say, someone like Miss Crane did, right? Because Miss Crane, you kind of need to get the stars, you gotta fire her battery, you gotta use her NP, all that good stuff, whereas Chloe, you just pop the skills and then she dips out. There's no, like, NP or anything needed, and you basically kind of get the same buffs anyway. You're going to give them NP, you're going to give them damage and both the attack buff and NP damage, which she does give on her third skill over here, where she's going to increase the party's NP damage by 20% for three turns. And then based on the amount of the manuscript completion stacks that you've got, that person's going to get 10% NP. Basically, then Chloe's going to cash in on those, give them the NP damage, give them the NP based on the manuscript thing. And then, you know, you pop the second skill and she leaves. You see this being very popular in Buster comps right now because remember, if you're using a Buster comp, you're probably also going to be using Oberon, and Oberon really loves NP damage. And while he does give 30% by himself, 
bumping that up to a 50% between her and Oberon greatly increases how good his third skill is going to be. I also see this being potentially good with art setups because arts teams can make use of Black Grail, right? Because Castoria gives them 100% and art servants will pretty much always naturally refund about all of their NP. And so this is going to make those Black Grail comps for say, your different arts teams that much better because it's that much more NP damage and it gives them a little bit of insecurity because it's kind of like an extra battery if you want to think about it that way. Overall, very straightforward skills. If you want to use her as just an extra plug suit, she's got you covered. It's going to be a lot easier to use than say someone like Miss Crane because you can immediately fire these on your skills and you do double buff the party, right? You give them an attack buff, you give them NP damage, and you also give them a little bit of an extra battery. But if you do want to use her as an offensive servant, she can also do some pretty nice crits. Now that doesn't mean you can't also use this in say your different quick farming teams, it's just because quick is a little further behind than say Buster and Arts and everything, you don't really see it being used as often over there. But one of the other things I do like about Chloe being a four star and being able to support like this is the team cost. If you've been doing Buster farming, especially if you're like my NA players that are playing Nero Fest right now, you know that team cost can start to wear you down with like your main farmer, Oberon, plus Koyan Sky, or you're already loading up on a lot of five star servants and probably a lot of five star CEs. So Chloe also being this really good additional piece for these farming teams while also being a four star is just very, very nice because you cut down on that cost just a little bit. So I do like that. Now she does have her own NP, doesn't really do anything for the whole like farming teams and anything like that. So it's not as exciting, but it's still not bad, right? You can see that she is getting additional damage depending on the amount of stacks that she does have for the manuscript completion. She's also gonna be able to reduce the enemy's NP gauge by one and she will stack her own quick buff. So even for herself, she's triple buffing herself, right? With the nice Nice attack buff with a nice NP damage and then she's also stacking quick performance which is also going to make refunding her own NP that much easier in quick chains because raising the quick performance is not only increasing their damage but it's also going to increase the NP gain on those cards. I mean, and you can also see that even without a ton of these manuscript complete buffs that she has, she can still do some pretty respectable damage like it's not that bad. But once you start stacking the manuscript complete and you start stacking your different quick buffs, you're going to be seeing a massive increase in damage and she'll start doing more and more as the fight goes on. So I do like that. Something else I do want to go ahead and note here is that Chloe might be one of those servants that you want to rush and get their bond CE because not only does it give herself 30% NP damage, which is huge, but it also gives the extra party an extra manuscript complete buff on everybody, which is also very nice if you need that extra little bit of NP or you need extra damage on your own Chloe. Think of it as a kind of like a double buff for her for her own NP because you get the NP damage and extra traits, which equals more damage, but also more NP for the party when you do decide to cash in on those. So yeah, this servant is pretty nice. Again, didn't really expect Chloe to be the standout servant. I was expecting, you know, the new Castori to be some insane looper or some insane new support, but no, it's like Castori is a really good single target art servant. She's very, very strong. No real complaints there. But then Chloe, on top of being a pretty decent single target quick servant, also functions as kind of like a better Miss Crane for plug suiting because she still gives the NP, she still gives NP damage, she gives attack, but then she also can just on demand leave whenever you want without having to use their NP. It's just more accessible because it's on a skill with no restrictions on like stars or anything like that. So let me know what you guys think about Chloe in the comments down below. Honestly, I'm probably gonna have to like double upload to get the rest of the summer eight servants out because Melusine's banner apparently drops on Monday. So expect tomorrow to be like Suzuka and Sinoc. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But yeah, it's definitely a fun time to be playing FGO JP right now. And I'm really excited to see that if these servants are this good, because Suzuka doesn't disappoint, I'm really excited to see how good Bargus, Sith, and Melusian are going to be. But you'll have to stay tuned to the channel because I will let you guys know all the good stuff that's coming with those guys when they actually do come out. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace late, guys.